In today's video, I give you seven common mistakes that beginner headshot photographers make, and I show you how to avoid them. I truly believe we are in a golden age of headshot photography. In this post-pandemic world, your image and online presence has become more important than ever. And the need for high quality headshots and portraits is probably at its highest level in decades. And many professionals who have had it with their corporate jobs have quit to start new businesses or find a better job or to pursue their lifelong dream. Many of these folks have decided to become headshot photographers myself included. And with people like Peter Hurley showing us the way, it's easier than it's ever been to build a successful headshot business in 2022. Having said that, it's still incredibly difficult to become a master at headshots. So today I want to detail seven mistakes that beginner headshot photographers make in order to help you avoid these common pitfalls. As always, do not forget to gently press that like button. There's no need to smash it. Leave me a comment subscribe to the channel and please share this video. Mistake number one, no calibration. One of the easiest things to do, which beginners often overlook, is to calibrate your monitor. As a beginner, this seemed incredibly complex to me for some reason, so I avoided doing it, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. But it's as simple as getting a calibration device and spending 10 minutes running a tool to ensure that your colors are correct. I currently use an iDisplay Studio calibrator by X-Rite, and I run the automatic calibration, which is extremely simple to do. Now, if you don't calibrate your monitor, you're causing yourself a myriad of problems. First, if you're shooting tethered, your client is not seeing an accurate representation of their skin tones. So even if the lighting is good, they're not gonna like the photos if they have, say, a very yellow skin cast, for instance, or if everything appears too dark or too contrasty. Second, by not calibrating, you have no idea if your white balance is set properly for your lights, so it's impossible to achieve correct color. Third, if you edit, and deliver photos on an uncalibrated monitor, they will wind up looking vastly different in color, contrast, and tone on the client's monitor or phone, which will end up causing you problems in the long run. Think of it this way. By calibrating your monitor, you're ensuring quality control over the final image. And even though you can't quality control things on your client's monitor, you can ensure that the quality is going to be perfect when it leaves your studio. I've noticed that cell phones generally do a great job representing color and contrast. And since most of your clients will likely look at the photos on their phone, you should be in good shape once you're calibrated. As a bonus tip, I usually check my own deliverables on my iPhone before I send them out. And I use the phone as sort of a second set of eyes when finalizing images, so try that too. Number two, awkward turns and poses. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Beginners often wanna overdo it when it comes to posing. I think it's because as a beginner, you think that posing is something your clients expect that you should be doing. And the truth is that the more headshots I take, the less I try to pose people. I found that the more I turn them, the less natural they look. It also creates other issues like big collar gaps, skin folds, and it makes it harder for your client to give you a genuine expression because they're already in a very awkward position. So my recommendation instead is to take the less is more approach. If you turn people, turn them a small amount. If you angle their head, remember that a head tilt will convey a very different emotional message than a non-tilted head. And the message it conveys will change based on which way you tilt their head. Also keep an eye out for big collar gaps created by turns, leans, and other awkward moves. And if you're a beginner, just avoid these moves altogether. I suggest taking some photos of your client without any coaching as well, just to let them do what feels natural to them behind your lights. I have found that sometimes this is the best approach, especially if you have a client who's struggling to be coached behind the camera or who is very self-conscious. Just let them be take some photos and see what you'll get. Now I do recommend coaching them as well at some point during the shoot, of course, but the key is to remember that every person is different and you need to adjust your strategy and your posing based on the particular person in front of your camera. Mistake number three, weird lighting and terrible shadows. I think that many beginners feel the need to create some sort of dramatic lighting for every person's corporate headshot. And since they don't have a solid grasp on lighting to begin with, the effects often leave much to be desired. I've seen many headshots with raccoon eyes, 
strange sort of split lighting where one whole side of the face is dark and the other is light, weird cheek shadows, or where the client is either ahead of or behind the light convergence, which creates a variety of terrible shadows and will look reminiscent of the spooky campfire lighting that your Boy Scout troop leader used to use. And I know all of these because I've done them myself. So here's what I suggest. If you've never taken a headshot before, before you go out and spend thousands of dollars on lights, just start by using natural light. Take a person, put them in front of a window, see how the light falls on their face, whether they're on one side or the other side of the window or with the window head on in front of them. Take a bunch of headshots outside with natural light and learn what looks good and what doesn't. By doing this, you will be learning a lot without the added confusion of multiple lights in the studio, and you will have a better chance to hone your people skills with your subjects while also working on lighting. If you already are invested in a studio lighting kit, my advice is to pick a very simple light setup and don't futz around with it during the shoot so you can concentrate on working with your subject to make them look great. Mistake number four, no attention to detail. When it comes to headshots, attention to detail is everything. Beginners are naturally overwhelmed thinking about camera settings, poses, light positions and values, and other things, and the nerves coming with photographing another human, so the details can easily get lost in the sauce. Things like wrinkled shirts, uneven collars, crooked ties, crooked glasses, messy hair, hair strands, messy makeup, and similar problems will plague the beginner headshot photographer. Even after doing this for a long time, I still find myself having to concentrate on these details since my main concern is always the client's expression. So it's important to not only shoot tethered, as I recommend in one of my other videos, but also, I think you should make yourself a small checklist that you keep near your computer discreetly, which reminds you to check on all of these things during the shoot. And when your client sees that you are addressing these small details, it will also show them that you're a total pro and it will increase their confidence level in you as you go, making the whole shoot better. Mistake number five, crappy gear. We've all been there. As beginners, we don't want to invest multiple thousands of dollars in gear. So we go on Amazon and we buy some dirt cheap LCD panels or a couple of non-dedicated flashes with inexpensive soft boxes. This, in my opinion, is a huge mistake because those low-end products are not at all reliable, they're made poorly, and they quickly will become more trouble than they're worth to you. One thing the beginner doesn't think about is the quality and the color of the light that your gear creates. And many of these dirt cheap flashes and continuous panels provide a very inconsistent light, which will have strange color casts. And all of this will degrade from your final headshot. The very worst place to cheap out though is on stands. I have a basement full of broken, cheap light stands, which I regret buying since they were never great to begin with and they failed within a year of purchase. So here's what I suggest instead. You definitely don't need to buy the most expensive lights out there, but if you're 100% sure you're going to make headshots a viable business or you're upgrading, I don't see anything wrong with buying the best. But there are also many cost-effective options that are not dirt cheap, but are very cost effective and excellent for the price. I use Alien Bees in my studio and I've owned them for eight or more years and they still work great. Number six, Kardashian level retouching. If you're a beginner, I admonish you to learn how to retouch properly now. Fact is, every single image needs to be retouched before leaving your studio, even if it requires very little work. And all of us have used one of those inexpensive retouching softwares in the past. You know, the one with the sliders that blast the skin tones into smithereens, including myself. Come on, be honest, you've done it too. But retouching is as much an art as a science and the best retouched photos do not look like they've been retouched at all. Subtlety is key. Yet I see many beginners who feel the need to eradicate every single line and dot on a face, leaving their clients looking like some sort of plastic Kardashian. And yes, plastic Kardashian is redundant, I know. Instead, learn how to retouch the right way now and save yourself the trouble of having to re-edit photos for your clients because they wound up looking like some kind of botched science experiment. Even if you don't want to retouch and you decide to farm it out to a retoucher, knowing the right way will do it will ensure that you can tell your retoucher exactly what you want. And it also makes it much easier to communicate the look you are going for with them as you grow your business and build your specific look. 
Mistake number seven, your clients show up with one clothing option. As a beginner, I remember feeling bad about asking my clients to bring a lot of clothing options with them to their shoot. I guess I didn't want to inconvenience them or something. And this of course is completely ridiculous because if your client shows up with zero options or just one or two, it makes it much more difficult to get great headshots. So here's the deal. People often look great in certain shirt or blouse. So they figure that's the one they'll wear for their headshot. But many times the same shirt will look just okay or sometimes not great on camera. The truth is that most people have no idea what to bring to a headshot session as well. So it's your job as a photographer to lay out clear guidelines on what they should bring depending on their career needs and the goal for their specific photos. I learned my lesson here a while ago. So now I tell my clients, just bring your whole closet. And I tell them that having a large variety of clothing to work with makes it much easier for us to get great shots. And even if we don't use everything, the worst case scenario is they just have to bring it back and forth with them to the shoot. Also, almost every time I wind up picking something that the client doesn't necessarily like, and this becomes the outfit they love the best. So remember that the more variety you bring, the easier it is for you to not only get great headshots, but also to maximize your sale of images. So it's a win-win for both you and your clients, and they will love you for it. Well, I could go on and on and on with more of these, but that's all that I have for you today. Check out my channel for more headshot related content and I'll link some below. And if you are really looking to become a world-class headshot photographer, the best piece of advice I can give is that you join Peter Hurley's headshot crew, which I will also link in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button, comment and share, hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Here's to wishing you a great day. Go out and take some awesome pictures and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.